First, let me say thank you to our sponsor, Lens Pro To Go, for providing the Fujifilm 200mm F2 for this lens review. We would not be watching it without their support. They have been fantastic. Thank you, Lens Pro To Go. I'll make sure you guys have a coupon in the description below. So if you guys have ever heard of Malcolm Gladwell, he's a fantastic author and he has a book called Blink. If you haven't heard of it, I would definitely recommend you go read it. And the gist of this book is that basically when somebody becomes an expert or a specialist in something, 95% of the time, their initial impressions are going to be correct. Whereas if you're not an expert in something, you got about a 50-50 chance. It's a fascinating read. And because this is kind of a really special lens and I don't have a side-by-side -side to compare it with, I decided to do this review just basically going out and shooting with it in telling you guys what my impressions are about its strengths and weaknesses. And I have a revelation I wanna share with you that may shock many people. So let me share with you the top impressions I had about this lens. As soon as I got it, I took it out and went to the bird reserve. We're gonna go out again today with my dad. We have the 100 to 400. We're gonna be shooting side by side with it. This lens is in a class on its own. It is the best Fuji lens I have seen. Uh, that's saying a lot. I've, I've shot with lots of different Fuji lenses, but for what this was designed to do, it is as good as anything I've ever seen. The strengths off the bat, image quality, absolutely stunning, outstanding. It is amazingly sharp as a lens itself. The bokeh is incredible. Almost no lens flare when shooting into the sun. The image stabilization is unreal, five steps of stabilization. And so when I was out shooting, I, I was hand holding it, it was shaking. As soon as you engage that halfway shutter button depression, it's amazing. It really locks in. I like the focus stop buttons that you can customize. I wish there were some more customizations available. The lens hood makes up for so much of the size of it. You can see it's actually a smaller lens when you take the hood off. The construction on it, the weather sealing on it is phenomenal. This is in a different league than most Fuji lenses and Fuji lenses are really nice. They're really well constructed. This is in a totally different league. It's an outlier. That's another book by Malcolm Gladwell. Those are the main strengths I'm seeing with it right off the bat. The weaknesses were for bird in flight shooting. I had to kind of tweak my settings to, to get consistent results. Obviously I'm shooting with a larger zone for birds, birds in flights that are just flying by real quick, it missed some of those shots. And, and maybe that had to do with more tweaking of the camera and the different settings. So that is the first weakness that I saw in terms of performance. And obviously the price is a big negative. This is a $6,000 lens when it's not on sale. And by the way, there's many Fuji lenses on sale right now, including this one. It's available for $5,000. So you can save $1,000. I want this lens. It reminds me of Canon's. 200 millimeter F2, Nikon has a 200 millimeter F2, that when you shoot with it, you feel you're looking at magic. That's how good the lens. It is almost a perfect lens outside of the focusing issues that I saw for birds in flight. It's almost perfect. It comes with a 1.4X teleconverter designed for this lens, but the truth of the matter was, I was a little disappointed when I put this on. The image stabilization didn't seem to be as good once this went on to the lens, it didn't, obviously you're getting that extra reach, but it felt like I lost a little bit of sharpness. Obviously you lose a stop when you put this on. I like that they include it because this is an expensive little guy to buy separately. It comes with a bag. So the conclusion that I want to make, and this is something in my own professional opinion, I don't have any other facts outside of what I'm about to tell you. This lens does not make sense to me for X-T3 or even X-H1 owners to purchase. It doesn't make sense. If you have a special sporting event, I would definitely recommend renting it, okay? And obviously Lens Pro to Go is a great place to rent it from. I think every Fuji camera owner should at least try it out. But the vibe that I'm getting from this lens is it doesn't make sense in so many different ways. The construction doesn't make sense. It's a white lens. Most Fuji lenses are black. The cost doesn't make any sense. $6,000? How many X-T3 owners are going to be able to spend four times the cost of the camera for a lens like this? I know I can't do it. That doesn't make any sense to me. 
And so the conclusion that I'm coming to, and this is gonna sound wild, is it feels like there's a camera that this was designed for that has not been released yet. So what I'm su suggesting as my opinion only is that Fuji has a new flagship APS-C camera. This is an XF mount, it's made for APS-C. The X-T3 does great. It has the improved processor speed, which we demonstrated in the focusing tests. And you can shoot some great images with the X-T3. And I love the X-T3. This lens is in a different league. It's, it's far beyond anything that I've seen Fuji-wise for sports. And because of the cost difference, the quality difference, what we're seeing from other camera manufacturers, what we're seeing in the improved processing from Fuji, the frames per second, improved battery performance, all these things that we're seeing to me suggests there's a flagship APS-C sports camera coming. When we looked at Sony with the A9 and some of the other mirrorless camera systems, the cameras came out and they didn't have lenses. And for, for years, you know, the first lens you had was that 400 2.8 in terms of telephoto primes. It's not enough. So what I think what we're seeing here is a very strategic plan from Fuji is to make the first telephoto prime for professional shooting uh, sports, which is really who this is designed for. Look, it's even got these little, these little uh, attachments that you see on Canon lenses. Same thing, to clip in with a strap. That is a professional feature. This was made for professional sports shooters. So what camera body would they be using? An X-T3? Does that make a lot of sense? You could definitely get away with shooting it, but it feels to me like something big is coming from Fuji. I wouldn't be surprised to see some other telephoto primes coming. I don't know, maybe they're in the works, maybe they're not. But if Fuji doesn't have a high-end sports shooting camera in the works, I would go so far as to say that's a mistake too. They can make a camera with the technology that we've seen and their algorithms and their processing speed that can easily compete with the A9 and they could probably sell it for two or $3,000 for a professional sports shooter, APS-C, this lens, that makes more sense. So those are my thoughts on the 200 millimeter F2. It's an incredible lens. This is not a lens that my students are gonna wanna buy. This is something you're gonna wanna rent and try it out or, or rent for a special event. Probably for the telephoto shooting, you're gonna wanna buy that 100 to 400, which I have. I purchased it because there's so many Fuji lenses on sale right now. We'll have a review coming on that soon. In any event, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.